Okay, I got a International 2050 Series A tractor here, and the guy says that it's not charging. So uh, about a, six months ago, I put a new alternator on here, and it was charging. It's a GM style um, one wire SI type alternator, which I just plugged back into the original factory. You can see this plug here plugs into the top two post uh, number one and number two, and then this lug goes to positive positive. And uh, used to have to rev the tractor up, <clears throat> but uh, somebody else did some work on it, and now it's not working. Pretty sure it was wired with an idiot light, but the wiring disappears underneath of the dash. So I'm going to abandon wires and set up my own idiot light first and see if I can get it to charge. Or no, this number two post gets grounded right to the battery, which they say to take it all the way back to the battery. It's the voltage sensing one, so it doesn't overcharge the system. And this number one post, I think, I might have these switched, but the number one post goes to the idiot light and then gets switched to the key switch so that when you turn it on the light comes on and then once you start it that light I think gives the coil um, uh, the voltage that it needs to generate it and then once it starts generating it sends uh, positive back out of this and then shuts the light off so if the light stays on you're not charging if the light goes off you are charging All right, I read that the light fixture itself should not be grounded uh, at the fixture uh, so I'm going to wire it in series and I got a little red warning light from uh, Radio Shack for a dollar just a little um, red uh, dash light so um, we'll see if that works it doesn't ground it's got two, two terminals on it. it doesn't ground at the at the uh, fixture itself so this is a 12 volt 100 milliamp uh, it's supposed to provide some resistance in the line see if it works hey okay, here's a uh, little tip I might have this camera upside down but I'm not really short <clears throat> so I got to solder these two wires together this is going to jumper wire which goes on the number one post which is the one on the right so I pick this little tip up I just get uh, some, I just have some 12 gauge wire that I've stripped. I keep this with my soldering iron and this really helps to solder in the joint but you basically, I can get this in focus, you push these two in together like you've seen with many soldering joints and then you mash it down and you get the little, the little wire that you've taken out of there and you get it started as you can see here that I did and then you just wrap this jumper wire around your joint and it bonds the two together before you solder it so that when you solder it it's uh you know there's no chance that they're going to come apart very handy it takes another second or two but if you have this stuff on hand then you can just wrap it finish it around this wire and uh that joint will not come apart there you see uh, the wire coiled around it and uh, um, my solder joint which put a little too much solder in there I always get a little overexcited but uh, <clears throat> that's my handy little tip for soldering so I'll get the rest of these wires done put together and uh, let's see if this thing works alright I got the uh, crude wiring done I uh, got number one jumper onto that post there uh, with a fork connector, I would have plugged a ring terminal, but I didn't have any that were fit for um, 12 gauge wire. That's all I had. And the blue wire comes out. This is just temporary. Goes to my little light there. And then <clears throat> on the other side, I have it plugged into the run position on the uh, key switch. Uh, I don't know if that's right. I, I mean, it makes sense to me when it's running, that's getting 12 volts maybe uh, I guess it would um, I don't know if it's supposed to be it shouldn't be for the start position because in theory if the, the tractor is running and uh, it's not charging the light should be on which means it needs a steady supply of 12 volts which I assume that's that key switch is wired okay let's see if I can get this to work turn the fuel on there's a safety 
lever there, which I guess this is tractor's hydrostatic, so I guess it. And um, then the key switch to first position. The light lights up. And if I can. And the light stays on. back on because it's not charging anymore and turn the ignition off so I uh, I guess there's too many amps light that I got is a uh, hundred milliamps is that too much I um, I gotta call my dad and, and see what he thinks Okay, so a little later in the day, I had some errands to run, but um, I figured out this um, dummy light apparatus, idiot light, whatever you want to call it. And basically, <clears throat> you really, I don't know if you can see it, but the number one terminal on this alternator, this is an SI type GM alternator, that's the exciter wire. So this isn't a self-exciting alternator the um, excitement needs to come from a switched source. So you can either, from what I've been reading and talked to my dad, you can either wire this in series with a light bulb, which I tried to do before and it didn't work because there wasn't enough resistance to make the light bulb go out. Uh, in other words, there wasn't enough voltage to excite the fields. And I tried it with a larger light bulb, um, this one here. Uh, which is a, uh, a uh, 1156, 1155, which is a tail light bulb, and it worked. What I was worried about was if you switch the number one wire to the ignition straight up with no light bulb, because when the light bulb goes out, there's 12 volts coming from both the alternator and the switch which is fine, it's a dead circuit. They're connected, it's 12 volts, everyone's happy. But it's important that the circuit is switched so that the fields aren't constantly getting 12 volts. So basically, I'm utilizing the ignition switch in order to excite the fields only when the tractor first starts. And the use of a dummy light is nice because if the light goes out, it's charging. If the light stays on, it's not. but uh, I don't really want to drill holes in this dash and install a dummy light. <clears throat> so I'm just going to connect it up, and when you start it up, it should, um, it should work. Uh, I don't, I've probably confused everybody, but that's the gist of it. On the alternator, the number one wire is getting connected to the start position, or the run position on the ignition switch, and the number two wire gets wired right to the positive uh, lug on the back of the alternator. So this is a three wire configuration. So when you turn the tractor off, uh, nothing is connected. When you turn the tractor to start, it, 12 volts is supplied to the number one terminal, which is at that time a ground. As soon as the fields are excited, it immediately becomes 12 volt positive, sending it back. And since it's 12 volts on both sides, it's a dead circuit, which makes sense. And when you turn the tractor off, that circuit is broken because the switch is the ignition. So, um, good learning experience here. I, alternators are a weird thing with the whole making AC current with the diodes and turning it into DC, but they work better than a generator. Okay, finished wiring up the alternator. So, <clears throat> this baby fired up. Might need to jump it.
switch off. It pulls a little bit of juice. Key switch on. Start her up. And then turn the fuel on, idiot. So thanks for watching and if I did this wrong and someone knows it, please let me know. But I think I figured it out.